Hey guys, we've got a pretty simple little fix to do this weekend. About a week ago, I was washing my Ninja 250 here, and when I went to clean the gauge cluster, this happened. This is the remains of the little rubber button that covers the trip reset button on the gauge cluster. When I went to wash the gauge cluster, this ripped off. Uh, this seems like it's probably a pretty common thing with bikes that get stored outside a lot, and I suspect that this button part is common to most Kawasaki's of this vintage. So today, I'm going to take this apart, I'm going to get the, uh, the fascia off the gauge cluster there, and replace this button. So I've got my new part, I've got some tools, and I've got a few hours to kill, so let's get started. Alright, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is, it's not difficult, but the bad news is, we have to remove this entire front fairing assembly in order to get access to the gauge cluster, which kind of fits in here under it. On the bright side, this is held on with relatively few fasteners as compared to newer bikes. We've got one here and there, we've got two here, we've got one more up here at the mirror, and then the same thing on the other side. So we've got a total of about 10 fasteners that we're gonna have to remove to get this fairing off. So first step in the process, get the fairing off by removing those fasteners and lifting it off kind of this way. These two lower fasteners at least if you have the original fasteners, are Phillips head screws and not hex cap screws like the upper ones are. All right, that's one side done. Now we repeat the process on the other side. It should be noted that the tab that holds the fairing to this hole right here on my bike is broken, but on yours, if it's not, you'd need to remove this too. With all of the fasteners removed, the fairing slides off the front. Don't forget to disconnect the cables for the turn signals. And if you're a little attentive about it, be careful not to scratch the plastics if you uh, have to touch them up against each other. All right, with our turn signal cables removed, this kind of snakes off the front there. After looking carefully at this, it seems like the best way to get this apart is to remove the gauge cluster from the bike and take it inside where it's cooler so I can take the thing apart there. Uh, but what that means is I have to remove the headlight to get access to the fasteners that hold this on. So the headlight is held on by a total of four fasteners, two on this side and two symmetrical ones over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, so there's our fastener out. Be prepared for these to be a pain to disconnect because they've probably never been removed before. May have to get a tool to put. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's our Electrical connector is disconnected. And we just unscrew the speedometer cable like this. Pull that out and let it dangle. Now, we need a socket to remove those. We also need a side cutter to be able to cut this. And these here look like an eight millimeter. I'm back with a couple of extra tools I'm gonna need. First thing I need to do is cut this zip tie off, liberate the wiring harness. There we go. Now we remove the fasteners that hold our gauge cluster. And it broke the tab right off. Good times. All right, well, while we've got this apart, we're gonna have to figure out how to fix that. But this one here is already cracking, and this one seems pretty sketch. So before we go a whole lot farther, we should maybe hit these with some penetrating oil or something. Hopefully we can get them to uh, come out a little easier. All right, so we've got my favorite brand of penetrating oil here. Let me just squirt a little bit on there. All right, then we let that sit for a little while. Okay, while I was waiting for penetrating oil to do its thing, I looked at this a little closer, and I'm gonna save you some trouble that I couldn't save myself and point out that this shroud is held on by these four screws here. There's two here, there's two here, and another one here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove those and see if I can just get the shroud off. I'm going to have to take this apart and repair this, which broke off. But if you're lucky, maybe you won't have to do that. These are regular size Phillips screws that mercifully seem to come right out. You could make this easier on yourself by using a longer screwdriver, but this stubby one is the one I grabbed because I like it for removing those bearing fasteners. And there we go. There's our eyes. And actually, the remains of our little odometer thing have already fallen out of there. Over there. Stuck to the, uh... I may live to regret it, but I'm going to see if I can remove these nuts that are holding the gauge cluster in with an impact versus trying to use a regular ratchet. This plastic is real brittle from having spent a short eternity outdoors, and much like exhaust fasteners, with brittle stuff, sometimes it works better to just give it a good whack with an impact. I'm gonna go ahead and try that. Wish me luck, guys. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't gonna work. Maybe this one will? There. See that? That one broke loose pretty easy. I uh, need an extension for this one. All right. Back with an extension on the impact, onto our fastener there. Give it a whack, comes right off. So now we gotta get the remains of this tab off so we can take all this out, take it inside, and figure out a way to glue it back together. That, I'm gonna see if I can use these channel locks to hold the stump still. You wanna be gentle with it if you can so you don't crush the plastic. There we go. If you take my advice, when you go after these nuts right here, Use an impact if you have one. That seems like it would make that quite a bit. And there's our cluster out. Before I attempt to glue this back together, I need to clean this a little bit, both just to make it look nicer and to make sure that the surfaces where I have to glue it back together are clean and dry enough to actually have the glue stick. You don't want to try to dunk this thing in water because it does have some electrical components inside. Okay, with that cleaned off, we can take a look at the problem we actually did all this in order to fix, and that's this right here. You can see it's torn off there, and in reality, it should look like that. Now, it looks to me like the way that you're supposed to replace this is that you would take the lens off and Do it from the inside. So we've got our bezel piece there. Oh yeah. So you take that apart like this, you pull this old nasty boot out. I'm gonna clean the crud out of the hole there. All right, well the crud's not coming out of the hole. I think it's just residue from the old boot. So we're gonna leave it. Installing our new boot is as simple as fishing it through the hole here and it has this little groove in it that needs to fit into there. So you fish it through the hole and we'll get the first part of the groove made it up. We work our way around. So we've got it in there. So when you're done, it should look like that. See that? You've got one of the ribs of the groove on the outside and the other on the inside. So because I got this wet, I need to let that dry and I need to find some glue that I can use to repair this guy. So I'll be back. Most of you have probably used epoxy before. We squirt it out of this tube and then pull the plungers back. And the epoxy works by a chemical reaction that the resin and the hardener have where they don't become a solid until they're mixed together and the chemical reaction happens that makes them become a solid. So I had this little tab break off of the instrument hood that goes right in here. And in addition to gluing that mounting tab back on the uh, gauge cluster. I need to glue this back into the hood so I can remount it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the tab to mix the two together here. We mix it for a few seconds. You can't smell this, but it smells amazing. All right. So 
after mixing it thoroughly, we get a big glob on our little piece. Let me stick our piece back into the cluster. Like that. And now we set that guy aside to dry. And this takes about half an hour to dry, supposedly. So we'll be back in 45 minutes or so to finish the job up. So now it's time to put the gauge cluster back on the bike. Uh, first step we'll go ahead and do is to fit the studs into the holes. And maybe we'll do the freshly epoxied one here first. You want to be careful not to put too much stress on the one you just epoxied if you can, in case the uh, glue is not totally dry. And then we take our mounting hardware, which for each one of the three studs for the gauge cluster includes a washer and one of these little 8 millimeter nuts. Put on the washer, Let's see if it'll stay there for just a second. And we get our nuts started. Another, so we get our washer on there, get our nuts started. Put our washer on there, get our nuts started. Now, while we used an impact to remove those, we're not going to use an impact to reinstall them. Instead, we're just going to use a regular old socket. These don't have to be terribly tight, just enough that they don't back off. Especially the one that we glued in place, we want to be careful that we don't re-break the glue. So now that we've got that reinstalled, we can hook our, connect our electrical connectors back together. They only go back together one way. There's one, and finally, we can plug our speedometer cable back in and run down the clamp. Now we're ready to reinstall our light. To grab our light, don't want to forget to plug the headlight power connector back in. Get it into position here. To get these fasteners started, you have to push this quite a bit farther back this way into the bike than it looks when you're standing here in front of it. With the headlight reinstalled, we can go ahead and put our uh, fairing back on. Fish it in here, being careful not to scratch it up too badly. You also want to make sure that your tabs back here get aligned. If you've only got one to align like I do, that one's not that difficult. Now you're ready to put your fasteners back in. The order that you put these fasteners back in doesn't matter terribly. As long as you get them all back in eventually. But it's important to remember not to use a power tool on these. Because if you overrun this into the hole, you can puncture the gas tank. And if you thought the ripped odometer condom was a bad day, try a leaking gas tank. Also, make sure you don't leave out your little aluminum bushing doohickey here. Now we repeat the process on the other side. I'm going to do these lower fasteners first so that we can get these tabs aligned because they're much harder to align when these are already in. I think it's best when putting these back in not use a ratchet or a handle at all and just use a socket or if, if you're using an Allen wrench, that'll work too. But they don't have to be super tight. And a lot of the times, you'll see these plastic fairings with little cracks around these where they've been over tightened, which these bushings are intended to prevent. But it's still possible to do, even with the bushings. But it's better to just be a little bit gentle. Just finish tightening them down hand tight. And those are all done. Our last bit that's left is the mirrors. The trick to the mirror is to get this pin lined up with the upper hole 
use that to help align this lower hole. Especially on older Ninja 250s, especially, and especially on ones that have been crashed more than once, as this one I'm pretty sure has, this frame in here can be a little bit bent out of shape, and that makes the holes for the mirrors difficult to align. So if we use this pin to help align the plastic with the metal in there, that speeds the job up significantly. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bolt in there, and I need my tool here. So I go ahead and I stick it in here. And I wiggle it around until I can get the pin in the hole. And that should align the bolt hole. You may have to persuade it a little bit. But you want to try to do this with just the socket and your hand and no tool so you don't cross thread that threaded hole in there. But once you get it started, it should go without too much effort. And then you can use a ratchet to finish tightening it down. One done, one to go. So we get our pin in there and aligned. There we go. All done. With the last of the fasteners reinstalled, we're all done. And we can put the tools away, take the bike down off the stand. I almost forgot to reconnect the connectors for the turn signals. There we go. And tuck them back down inside the fairing, out of the way. The fairing has a nice little plastic rim inside there. It's great for tucking them back inside. I also added a zip tie to hold that gauge cluster cable in place. And now, before we call this a victory, let's turn everything on, make sure that all of our lights work. All right, well, that's all there is to it. I gotta admit, this is a pretty oddball job. Uh, I've never heard of anybody else having this problem before, but I'm sure it must have happened because they sell the repair part. So if you've had to do this, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing in the comments under what circumstances was it that you needed to do this. Did you, like me, went to wash the gauge cluster and it just ripped off? Or did it fail in some other way? Uh, so if you came here looking for entertainment, um, I'm terribly sorry for you, but I hope you were entertained. If you came here looking for mechanical advice, I hope it helped you out, and I will see you in the next one.